Did y'all watch Drag Race at all? Yeah, I did. No, not yet. Okay. Mm-hmm. If you like to, I mean, I. You might want to just wait until Dewan, because girl, I don't know Dewan. any of them queens okay. besides Georges okay. and and Angeria. Okay. So I can right. tell you shit about the other girls. So oh, that's right. You be talking by yourself. That's true. <laughs> All right, I'll save it for Dewan. But Lane and I'll be like this over here, girl. Why right. you talk? <laughs> so who that hoe is? <laughs> I don't know that hoe. <laughs> Hey, community, here's what's brewing today. Bleach blonde, bad built, butch body. Bye, Diddy. And ask your aunties, roses are red. So get your cups ready for Minority Report. Hey, hey, welcome to Minority Report. It's Auntie Corell. It's Auntie Jarrell. And it's Auntie Landon. Hey. hey. Welcome, hey. baby girl. What's up, hey. What's up? It's been, it's been a, a few months. Yeah, it's, it's been, been a months. Minute. It's been a minute. Where you been you know, at? It, 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 the community already knows. <laughs> if they don't see Dewan, they know she's somewhere in this world. <laughs> uh, somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. Where somewhere in the world, world is Auntie it's Chardonnay. Auntie <laughs> Chardonnay, <laughs> look. That Naughty. needs to be a shirt. That's going to be, well, she needs to come back. All of a sudden, we're going to be wearing shirts one day while she on vacay. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Where's Auntie Chardonnay? <laughs> it's like, we don't know. Well, she's somewhere. Mm. But, uh, but yeah, no, she, 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 she on vacay. And yeah. shout out to our friends, uh, Kenny and Alex. They're kind of renewing their vows. So uh, they're over there over Congrats. in Spain, kind of renewing their vows. So that's super cool. So uh, yeah. I guess, I guess we could take a couple weeks off for that. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I guess so. After the last one, you know, when we were all in Palm Springs, we had a a little uh, we had some kitchen malfunction, so there was some noise in the background. Honey, so, y'all was oh, actually, just so loud. Know, actually, so we take that back. We heard you a couple episodes ago. You right? You ain't been gone. Right, right. That's right. You were just here a few weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, you were on the episode a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. So true. Yeah. I was like, these have was extra loud. Damn. Yeah. And, and you don't even want to know why. You don't even want to know why. I'm not going to call nobody out, but Oops. all I'm going to say is... Say their say names. Their name. <laughs> Look, that, that's what you're going to say? Their okay. names? Somebody burnt the chicken. And somebody didn't pay attention to the oven. And I'm over here like, um, what are you doing over here? How, how, like, how do you fuck up chicken? I said, you know what? I'm just going to... I'm going I'm to a, I'm a, I'm a channel my inner Auntie Corral. And stay out of grown folks' business. Just stay mm-hmm. out of grown folks' business. Mm-hmm. I don't know I'm how they order something they from was loud. They sound like they was throwing down in the kitchen. Shit. As, as, as many in the garbage. And pans, in the garbage. Heard. In the garbage. Uh, yeah. Oh, so it was funny though. It was funny though because someone. It uh, wasn't my our, man, was it? It was not. It was not. Okay, good. It was not. Praise it's Jesus. Why they do it, yeah, girl? They, look. Praise, <laughs> listen, let me tell you something. <laughs> Fizzy can cook. I've been yes, there. He okay. Yeah. He can mm-hmm. cook. So someone left something in the oven and I'm just like watching him. He's just like chilling in the living room. I was like, I said, you know what? I'm just going to leave this shit. And then he come <laughs> landed, across. Landed, landed and then we're going to take check on the chicken, but he smelled the chicken burning. <laughs> Listen, I say at a grown folks business. Uh-huh. No, and Landon, yeah, said, it was, it, his food was probably ordered on DoorDash before he even realized the chicken was, was burnt. Yup. <laughs> well, I pulled that shit up. I said, oh, no. Let me go ahead and put this on my cart. Uh-huh. The moment she forget, order. I order. said, it's going to be a Here vegetarian meal tonight. It's going to be a vegetarian meal tonight. No, so, ma'am. But I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, and by the way, so... happy birthday, boo. I was about to say that. Hey! Happy birthday. Hey! 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 Thank you. Yes, the week this comes out will be a birthday. What, the uh, 28th? Right, uh, right before. So it comes yeah, out right on the 27th, before. right before. Yeah, there we yeah. go. Yeah. So how does it feel to be the elder statesman of the, the group right now? <laughs> um, oh, damn. Well, considering she what really is feeling with... for Dewan. She's really <laughs> feeling it for Dewan. Listen, really after is. what just happened, so, yo, as I'm getting ready, setting up for my podcast, oh, my God. As we're setting up for the podcast and I'm getting my mic and everything ready, I stubbed my toe really bad. And Ooh. so I didn't even realize like as i'm getting ready i'm like where is all this blood coming from i was like yo Oof. it looks like fucking carry in here and yeah. it smells of fabuloso as i'm trying to like clean this floor and get everything <laughs> together and i'm like yo 
I'm turning 41 next week. This is some old people shit. This is some <laughs> old people shit. Yeah, so, um, how does it feel? You know what? I, I feel great. I feel great. Um, well, I know that's right. It, Claim it. I feel great. I want I, I want to ask you this after the weekend. So after this podcast come yeah, out, that, that I'm going to ask you how you feel. <laughs> well, you it's got funny some you birthday say that. Plans. So you wait, got some birthday so plans. You, I do have some birthday plans. Oh no, shit. So <laughs> <laughs> because Lewis and I are going to Asbury Park. So I know. Yep. Did you, you know, know? Did you know I'm coming? <laughs> I told you. No, you're not. Re yes, no, you're yes. Not. Remember, no, you're not. I told you. Remember, I told you that I knew what you were doing for your birthday because Corel was telling me that him and Lewis had a conversation. So when I asked what you were doing for your birthday, I was like, "Wait, never mind. I know where you're going." Because of Corel. <laughs> Wait, what? But she'll be there too. And she didn't even know. And maybe it was supposed to be a surprise. No, no. Uh, I think so. <laughs> Well, community, you just saw the reaction. <laughs> I'll be, like, it was funny because Lewis was uh, our friend Lewis. Community, here we go, inside talk right now. But uh, our friend Lewis was like, hey, what are you doing Memorial Weekend? So, oh, by the way, happy fall? Memorial What's Weekend, uh, by the way. Memorial Day and all that shit, too. So, hope you guys are rested. And, I mean, some people got to work on Memorial Day. My husband got to work on Memorial Day, so it is what it is. Make them coins. But hopefully it's a peaceful Memorial Day for everyone. Um, and thank you to all the vets and everything like that as well. Thank you to those and, who are um, serving and have served. Oh, because that so show ain't my ministry. So I thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so he was like, what are you doing this, this weekend or that weekend? And I was like, well, you know, a couple people from Philly are thinking about going to Asbury Park. He's like, that's funny you say that. Landon and I are going to go out there from this date to this date. I was like, well. Bitch, I'll be out there and see y'all asses out there. So, so it's just gonna be for the day, likely. Okay, okay, um, okay. But, uh, but, but yeah, still. Saturday, so. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I think it was probably supposed to be a surprise. So Ooh, baby. now you just <laughs> no, spilt the all the tea. No, that <laughs> just goes. No, th no, that just goes to show how how lit Sunday fun day started to get it at the Eagle because I sure did tell you on our walk. You did from ah, boxers you know to <laughs> Eagle. So, so Ooh, it I was need to hear the tea. I haven't even so, followed up on y'all on that too. <laughs> Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, we got to talk about that. So in my mind, when you said that, I was like, something ain't right. Something ain't right. I'm like, how, like him and Lewis talk like that? Right. And so, <laughs> so in my mind, and granted, by then we had gone to boxers, had two or three drinks. It was two for one at the boxers in Chelsea. So everything is just like spinning you know my girls in town we talking you know we talking tea and so he said that and it just kind of just whoop, went over the head whoop, right <laughs> just went over my head and speaking of we, we started this conversation about you know how does it feel to be you know the older statesman yes the next morning the next morning i woke up i said that damn Jarrell. <laughs> i said i woke up i was like oh God. The world was spinning. <laughs> the ro I wasn't sick, but I definitely was like, shit, I need to get into that stash of Gatorade. The, look, I need that's to how it be. And the listen, and li listen, Corel, you know, you see me at my worst when I threw up in them bushes in Chicago <laughs> that one time. <laughs> it, we were not there. We were not at that stage, so we're okay. So that's a level 10. Okay. What level were you at? <laughs> I, oh, way, way, way not. Way just like, okay. level, okay. like level two, level three. Like, I just woke oh, okay. up. I was okay. like, that damn Jarrell. But it was headed that direction. It was definitely it headed was. that direction. Oof. And I was like, we got to go. I was like, we <laughs> got to go. Because you pulled a we, I gotta go home. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was very much no, like when we met the first time and I was like, we, oh, got, yeah, the boat, like, we got things to do, so we need to go. It was that. very much more like that. It started I was to like, get there. Mm -mm, mm -mm. It started we, to get we there. We having too much fun. Yeah. These drinks are going down way too quick. Mm. Way too quick. And the next thing we knew, like when we first got there, there were barely anybody in there. By the time it was time to go, it was thick. We it were like, bad. should we stay? Thick. Ooh, how, ooh, the, like, are, we, are we talking about the crowd or the bodies? Or Both. yes? Both. Yes. <laughs> Both. Both. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, mm -hmm. the Eagle community. If you haven't been to the Eagle in New York in the last, call it, two years, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's kind of that spot again. It's kind and of I that forgot spot. all about that rooftop. So that wind was hitting. Girl. It felt nice. Oh, you know, yeah. when the weather is nice, you got a vodka lemonade. You're looking you at have all your, the your, trade. Your ta -ta's out. Yes, had the tatas out. Yeah, had yeah, the, the tatas out. Yeah, open, honey. open. <laughs> I'm like, yo, this is you know, I'm with my girl. 
I said, you know what? I got to work tomorrow, but you know what? I just might have to go in late. And I woke up. I was like, oh, shit, that damn Jor- Jarrell. I said, man, I don't need to be hanging out with her on a Sunday, especially when I got to work the next day. The I way look, town. Uh, Jarrell's like, yeah, Lando will be here around two. I got out there about like 1.30. I was like, nope, nope, no, no, I'm not about to get sucked <laughs> to stay here all day. Girl. <laughs> Yeah. And look, and the way that I wanted to make sure that I was <laughs> I was good to get to the airport the next day. So community, let me tell you. Oh God. Y'all. Yeah, let you might have to hold on, on your own team. Hold on, let hold on. Let's set this up y'all. because <laughs> two episodes ago, the title of the episode was called I forget the first two parts of it, but the last part of the three part harmony is what we call it internally, was Jarrell Lost in New York. Jarrell lost so, in New York. Part two of this. <laughs> so part two. Okay. Um, so your girl didn't get lost. Okay. Let me just start by saying that. I made it from JFK to Dewan's without any directions, without the help of an app, without even asking a stranger for help. Okay. By myself. Didn't even get lost. Took all the correct chains. Great. I left the wands to JFK without directions, without help, without instructions, didn't get lost, made it perfectly fine. But why did I go to the wrong airport? <laughs> <laughs> the way I got CT yesterday and I was giving that lady my ID and she said, can, can you put your, your boarding pass on the thing? And I was like, oh yeah, sure, girl. And it scanned red and I said, red? And the way I looked at her, she just gave me the status face. And she was like, sweetie, you at the wrong airport. And I said, Ooh. no. I didn't even read the, the return flight. I said, where the fuck am I supposed to be flying out? <laughs> <laughs> she don't know. <laughs> Girl, <laughs> the way I was so caught up in not getting lost and getting to and from the airport, I didn't even realize or just remember that there were multiple different airports. So, so which I'm one were you supposed to fly out of? Newark. Newark. See, see, that was already your problem. Girl. That was already problem number uno. <laughs> okay. Newark? Okay. Girl, Girl, you so literally says, gotta take a flight to Newark in order to that, get on one. Girl. That. <laughs> Wait, so no. I didn't even ask you after you sent that text, and I was just like, oh, no. I was like, I, I don't even know what to tell her right now. So did, were you able to just book a flight out of JFK, or what? how did you get <laughs> so I'll tell you, you get to Seattle. let me tell you, <clears throat> this is how I know I'm an angel because the because the man above be looking out for me, okay? I know that's Just right. Just saved, okay? Because the way I hopped on fucking Alaska support and I was like, so let me tell you something. <laughs> I think her name was Stephanie too. And I literally was like, so Stephanie, let me tell you something. So I'm flying out of New York and I happen to be at the wrong airport. And Stephanie done heard this story before, though. The show has. Look, okay. the, the way Stephanie said, I got you, was the after hey. I got done telling you, she said, I got you. She did a same day flight change. So it literally was just a 50 buck change to like there change my flight right. to an hour later out okay. of JFK. So when I tell you, shout out to Stephanie <laughs> at Alaska Airlines Support. You yes. are real yeah. one. You are real one. Look. Help, helping one. our auntie get to, to where she needs to be. <laughs> so she ain't got to catch a flight to Newark to get back to oh, Seattle. Buddy. Baby, because the way I looked, I was like, well, maybe I can get an Uber. $200 oh, from yeah. Uber from between the airports. I said, mm-mm. Then it was probably going to be like two hours. It was an hour and a half. And so yeah. I wouldn't have made my flight. And here I am getting to JFK like an hour and a half early before my flight being like, I got time. I'm going to sit here. I'm going to just do my thing. No, 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 no. <laughs> but so you then, with extra, extra time. <laughs> let me tell you right. something. JFK stands for just fucking know your damn airport or where you need to go. <laughs> oh, so let me continue. <laughs> let me continue. So first off, I get to the terminal, Terminal A. That's where I thought the terminal I was supposed to go out of. I thought that was Alaska. So I'm at Terminal A. Land, fix your face. I'm at Terminal A. <laughs> I got my new boarding pass. They scan. I get through security. And I'm like, okay, well, let me go to my gate since I'm here. I'm just going to sit around. Then I'm looking around. I said, why everything say American Airlines? Oh, Jesus. Girl, so now I done went through security in the wrong goddamn terminal. 
So my ass had to go back out the security, go to terminal number seven where Alaska Airlines actually is, and then get back in line to Maybe go. Maybe them through. drinks did hit you hard on Sunday. <laughs> Shit. Honey. <laughs> All we know is when you travel with Jarrell, do not give him the responsibility <laughs> to get us to where we need to be. <laughs> That's what I just learned through the last two weeks of these damn episodes. <laughs> when I tell you I'm a driver, I don't be doing subways. Oh, I don't fuck around with airplanes. Landed. What you said? Y'all got to, y'all got to where y'all needed to go <laughs> safely. Nobody died. <laughs> Were no animals harmed? Ain't no make speeding sure you, tickets. Make Were sure no that you know the tickets. time and date of this <clears throat> podcast right now. What you just heard. Okay, Let me tell you. Them oh shits. Hey, make sure that car got oh shit hang uh, handles. Because... You got there just fine. On top of that, we even beat the GPS. Listen, <laughs> listen, listen, that one time that we went to Palm Springs back in 2022, literally, we're sitting in the back of this forerunner, right? Jarrell is driving like a bus driver. She got, she had 10 and 2 right here with the wrist curl. And Corell and I did this. <laughs> we just looked at each other like, girl, she is like bucking like a mechanical fool through the traffic. Yo, going you like a talk good about going a grease, good hundred. Grease lightning, okay? <laughs> through LA. And we literally, I think at some point Corel did grab that handle. And I was like, <laughs> I said, I was like, girl, you gonna make it that obvious. And here's the best part. Fisnick was just there chilling like, yo, right. he's Fisnick like, was chilling. Just chilling. he was used to I'm it. Just, I'm used to this shit. I said, yo. And then Landed the funny and part, in the wait, back wait, wait. Was about to die. <laughs> wait, and I think even in the podcast right after, you were like, Jarrell drove exactly like I thought he was going to. 1,000%. <laughs> yeah, 1,000%. That shit was mad funny. Because okay. we looked at each other like, girl. But look here. <laughs> All I have to say is I'm a very efficient driver. I like to get to where the fuck I'm going. I don't take the scenic we route. Got there. I don't like to <laughs> look. Again, I didn't run no lights. Chime in your Ali. I hope you make it back in one piece. Look, and y'all know it. Look, didn't run no lights. I did. I used all my signals. I didn't cut nobody yeah. off. I look. I don't know about that part. But. I didn't cut nobody off. Everything was a signal. Ahead of time, you get three seconds to see my signal. Listen, I was One, so busy two, looking three, down, merge. I didn't pay attention because I didn't want to watch. <laughs> That's your own damn fault. <laughs> she don't be GPS. You know GPS be like on it. Like the technology's got so good that it knows the second you're supposed to get there. We was like, damn, we got here about ten minutes early. How? how? <laughs> Grease damn. Lightning J because she knows Grease how to Lightning get there. JT. That's your new nickname on my phone. <laughs> Grease Lightning. Grease Lightning. Like, damn. Okay then. Shit. Look, I have so, never yeah. had a single speeding ticket, parking violation, nothing. When I tell y'all I am an excellent driver, although it may be a little bit too fast for you old birds. That's okay. I ain't never been into nothing. And I'm gonna knock on wood to make sure I ain't never been into nothing. Praise Jesus. I know that's right. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Oh Lord, yeah. So uh, <laughs> the moral of the story is, you you got uh, traveling with Jarrell is uh for, not for the faint of heart. <laughs> it really isn't. Let, let me tell you, there's a reason why I plan every single thing out Ooh. because if I don't, I'm gonna miss something. And the you didn't plan for that airport detail, though. I sure didn't. Sure I sure didn't. didn't. I was paying. I, I was planning on the direction. Through, I was just like. Oh, I still. You know no. what? Here's you should have seen my face, Corell, when I was laughing. As I sent that text message, I was literally laughing so hard. I was like, guess who made it to the wrong airport? <laughs> That's literally Because the whole said. weekend we're like, okay, <clears throat> you, you, you did good this time. You know, you got to DeMar's place. Okay, okay. And I was like, damn, okay. Anyway, <laughs> Lord. Yeah. But uh, community, before I forget, we need to put this earlier in the episode. Yes. Do us a favor. Go into YouTube and subscribe. Not everybody that listens to the podcast is subscribed to the YouTube. So mm -hmm. do that. We can see the numbers. We can see who's watching it. And then, mm -hmm. you know, all the other YouTubers say this shit. But now that I look at the data, I'm like, oh, that shit is true. <laughs> so please subscribe. Mm -hmm. And then also do us another solid. And just letting that playlist of all our podcasts, all 200 plus episodes that are out here on YouTube, just let that shit ride. Just let that shit ride. Because we're super duper, super duper, super duper close to hitting the monetization goals that we need for the podcast on YouTube. So that would do us a solid. 
and it will also help us just like plan future events we got a lot of great feedback about uh finally yeah. doing an episode in person <laughs> so that would help us in the in the future kind of plan those out just because you know we're all in three different locations so yeah just hit that that minority report podcast playlist let all them episodes just ride in the background let it go all through the night and all that stuff you know let it let the dog if you'd like to keep your dog company while you're at work or something like that just let it be your aunties in the background that dog gonna like crack that. up so, though that's true <laughs> that's true It'd be some entertaining shit. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, we appreciate that. We appreciate that. But um, whoo, whoo, man, the this news. week was some entertaining shit. Bad. <laughs> if, if 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 the world don't know not to try a black woman, <laughs> bleach blonde. They know now. Bad Bill Butch body, honey. Yeah. Bleach blonde. Bad Bill Butch body. Like, uh, you just see. <laughs> A lot of people are like, oh, she sounded like a, a, gay, a gay black person. No, gay black men got this shit from their aunties, that? from their mamas. The I've just that? heard, I've seen some comments and shit oh. like that. You know who it is. It wasn't our yeah. complexion. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and I'm like, no, this is who we learned it from. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is mm-hmm. who we learned it from. Don't play with them. Do not play mm-hmm. with them. And also don't play with us. But especially don't play with them. Because you're going to get your feelings hurt. Love. You are gonna get your feelings hurt. And don't hurt. even know that you got your feelings hurt. Like it was so funny. I bet you it wasn't until after that stuff started. When she was like, "Oh, oh damn, oh, damn. damn, she damn. read me for I got red. girl." Read me and for... watching that video, it was <laughs> watching the chairman and <laughs> the person the, next the to the chairman. Man. He's great. Look, Jamie Raskin the was cracking dude, up. He said, "Yo, because, this bitch got red." Yo, the way he said. Oh, oh. <laughs> he was because the other dude said, "Wait, hold on, what you say? I don't, I don't know, I don't know what you said." And the other man said, "And a what? And what now?" And what now? Took Here's the me thing, like, out. To me, it wasn't even like the, the bleach blonde part. It wasn't the bush body part. When you call somebody bad built, <laughs> that, <laughs> that shit took me the fuck out. Like, you can go re-dye your hair. Bush body, okay, you know what? You might even be able to go to the gym. But bad built just means, like, start the fuck over. Like, like you can't even, like, do shit. <laughs> Dead like ass, literally Yo. bad built. like if someone called me bad built i'd be like Whoa. i would be like take me now lord because like i, I just can't no more i just can't no more like growing up we used to always say bad body be like oh she bad body like that was like the ultimate diss so for her to have that already on the tip of her tongue <laughs> ready to go ready no, to i wouldn't go. be surprised i wouldn't be surprised if she said you know what i'm gonna save this i'm gonna save this shit for when this bitch acts a fool. And what y'all need to really understand is y'all need to stop messing around with black people, but more so, y'all need to stop fucking around with people named Jasmine because they will not <laughs> hesitate to put show in, put you in your place and make you wish that you did not start with them because you're going to get red for filth. You're going to need to come my, pick up your feelings. My, my <laughs> favorite type of shade. I'm not fucking with nobody shade, named Jasmine. My favorite type of shade is when you don't even know that you got read the Ooh. fuck down until but days people, later. But the people around you in the moment know. Everybody that. in on it but you. Five. That is how you read a bitch down. Because that will have you questioning some shit later on once you realize it was you. Like, so how did you catch this? Like, and here's the maybe thing. So I am bad built. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> right, you went to the bathroom after that break and said, damn. You looked yourself in the mirror like, damn. Damn. Built like a shake machine. Uh, <laughs> did they say a cereal box in that song? <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> she said she got a face like a Bud Light pack. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> but here's the thing. Like, A, she didn't even stutter. Do you know how hard it is to get out blind? A good read. <laughs> Like, a good read without that a that stutter? Beat. No, that alliteration. That alliteration. How she got that out crisp without Crispy. the stutter. Girl, Crispy. that was... Stop fucking around with black Iconic. people. Girl. Iconic. Stop fucking Girl. around with black people. And she knew and she got it too because she got that little smirk in here, she said. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and it's the setup. It's the setup too. She was like, she's like, Chairman, so I just want to understand for clarifications about attacking false a person. False sense of security. You false know, sense of security. That's some black people yep. shit. They'll be like, I just want to, I just want an understanding. I just want a clarification on this and read you why I just simply said I'm asking for clarification when we know damn well. <laughs> we know what the fuck we, we, <laughs> we heard. We know. But there's one thing that people need to understand is y'all need to stop fucking around with black people. 
Y'all need to stop fucking with us in these streets. You need to stop fucking with us at these boat slips because you might get hit by a chair Honey. and you might get red in Congress. And like, it's so ingrained in culture now, that quick. Yeah. Like she went and got her mm -hmm. trademark, which I'm good. I'm glad mm -hmm. she did. She went and got her yeah. trademark and all the funds like from any profits that she gets from from mm -hmm. t-shirts and all that stuff is going back towards supporting the house democrats so she's like i'm yeah. gonna take all these coins because i could get rich off this shit. yeah but i'm gonna put it back for good because we need it's a voting year so yes. we need some funds <laughs> to help us support the folks that are trying to get reelected. Uh, real and then she also advertised a crockett clap back collection <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I am so done with you, Miss Crockett. <laughs> Listen, that's that's the that's the friend that you want to go out with. Honey. Okay? Okay. That's the friend that you want to go out with. You know she cuts up. You know she cuts up. Uh, period. One thousand percent. And I also just I appreciate that she did not hold back. And although in that moment too, MTG was because I ain't saying her name, MTG was very much like you need to calm down doing what they typically do to try to yep. hush black people up especially black women you being after loud they you started being that loud, shit. you need after to calm they start down. the shit yes but they uh, it's just i hate the idea that they want to try to, to share the power this budget that. from the record too yes exactly so i appreciate it I, I love Period. every bit of it. I love because AOC tried to get her. AOC said, huh, "Don't be calling me no honey." Look, she said, "Baby girl." Said, no. <laughs> she's like, "I got this." She, I got this. Hold on, mm -hmm. hold on, hold on. Let me get she's clarification. Like, I'm just trying to, she's like, this clarification. <laughs> and just it's trying to understand. To her, can I get clarification? And, and I, I already, you know, I didn't see it until actually I read it first. I did. I hadn't seen the clip. I read it oh. first thing in the morning. I said, "Ho, ho, 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 hold on, 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 hold on." I had to do a double take because I had only had one cup of coffee. I said, bleached blonde, bad built bad butch body. Built. I said, yo, I gotta Google this shit. As soon as I Googled it, I said, oh, here we go. Here we fucking go. She this done, so she done red Marjorie three brain cells and three toes for filth. No. Yo, I, and then now for the and then you know the internet just the internet just played too much, so that's like the black part Twitter, where like, black Instagram. Y'all need to stop fucking with us. And now we, we got black AI music. There. This black AI music <laughs> shit is so wild to me. It's wild. Like, and you know what? Insane. I didn't even realize. I didn't even think about. I was just cracking up so hard. I didn't even realize that was probably AI with that Isley Brothers thing. But <laughs> that that shit is wild that they can come up with that so quickly. It's yeah. almost scary, but yeah. it's funnier first and then scary. I'm like, damn, that was yeah. quick. And the, the group was called the Clapbacks. <laughs> Yo, that shit is fucking that wild. Is so I need that on a crop top right um, now for Pride. I need, a crop top. You, I need the that's vinyl. That's the shirt for Pride. Yeah. That's oh, the shirt God, for Pride. Yes. Yep. yep, you right. I, I need a find crop it. top I'm gonna make, I was just about to say that. I went yep. on a crop top. Yeah. I went on a crop top so bad. Because it was around this time, like, <laughs> right before COVID, the Reclaiming My Time was, like, the shirt. And yep. I had one, too. Mm -hmm. uh, for, I for remember that. Yep. Uh -huh. So yep. this is going to be one we see. Oh, my God. Yeah. God, so Let icon. me tell you. You know, like, each year, there's a, there's a black moment in culture each mm -hmm. year like last year was the brawl in, in alabama <laughs> with the boats this right now this is it this mm -hmm. is it so far and it's only may so granted <laughs> we still got like six more months <laughs> of possibilities but True. this baby honey all year no stutter. all year that's what really all it's year. like the bad bill and the no stutter that got me. yeah and then the last oh, you know end, what? she said, oh, I got this bitch. And then when she did <laughs> that look at the end, she said, when she said, he said, and a what now? And she said, <laughs> ah, this is so funny. It was up there with like a Phaedra read. That's yes. what it was up there with. I was with. just about to say it that. Like, yeah. you, got the Phaedra, you got the Phaedra read and that yeah. carried us for a good long time. A good decade. Now this one, <laughs> This one? Oh, honey, this is a, this is. This is for every Karen out there now. That's what you just got to call her. <laughs> the three times. Lord help us. Whew. Yeah, that was good. That, that was, good. was good. Yeah. Oh, man. What's next? I don't even know what to say after this. Oh, <laughs> oh, God. And then another, oh. man, Diddy. Oh. <sighs> yeah. 
Yo. This Negro. This Negro. Like, when that... And so, I don't know, community, if you've been under a rock the last... However long. And the last, last year week, at this point. Yeah. And trigger and warning. Trigger week, warning. Oh, 1,000 trigger, trigger warning, warning right, right now. <clears throat> if you've been... You know, I wouldn't even uh, go watch it. Right. Like, if and, you haven't and stumbled it be, upon it... Right. Whether it be the it. video, whether it be us talking about it right now, yeah. we... There's someone out there who's listening to this that knows someone who has been a victim of sexual assault or or domestic violence. Or domestic and violence, yeah. So just putting it out there, just a little bit of a warning, like this that that is that is just I I can't even put the words together. Mm-mm. And and I looked this up before the time uh, here too. Dem- the, if if it is triggering or if you do need help or anything like that, the domestic uh, abuse hotline is 1-800-799-7233. 1-800-799-7233. You don't have to go through this by yourself. And if you feel any kind of shame or whatever it is, call that number because they'll definitely be able to help you. But uh, the, the CNN was able to release a security footage from 2016 showing Diddy beating Cassie up and pretty much verbatim of how she said it in her testimonies. After about, he denied um, it. After he denied it. And for that to come out, we're like, damn, damn, Negro, come on now. What? And then for him to hop on the social webs with whatever this so-called apology he tried to do, which was super narcissistic because it wasn't even like talking he about her and just like, uh, to her. apologize to her it was just like oh i got stuff to work yeah and you got stuff on the we saw <laughs> we saw that shit already yeah you got you've shit to been work had on. stuff to work on <laughs> sir <laughs> um so so for him to even do that it's just like uh this is there's, so there's there's something about this that like really runs deep and the fact of the matter is, is that we cannot fight for and advocate that black and brown lives matter when there are those that actively engage in this behavior and actively choose to question what did she do like it doesn't matter it doesn't matter whether she stole a wallet whatever she did minding her business it doesn't matter people want to ask like what did she do before diddy assaulted her it doesn't matter and then you know, it, it speaks volumes about dis, di, like dismissing the claims and failing to take responsibility for causing <clears throat> such abuse, full stop. <clears throat> and it's, it's really, it's emblematic of a bigger problem when it comes down to a failure to hold people accountable for their actions. And for us to hold each other accountable in our own community, we cannot talk about black and brown lives matter asian lives matter when we are dismissing people's claims and dismissing their experiences when it comes to things like this and seeing some of the things in comments and social media comments anybody with three brain cells and a fingernail can can get a social media account and voice their opinion but the, for people to get on these these social media platforms in question dismiss her claims we just we just we got the proof we got the proof we we see it we saw it like granted, after yeah. he said he like he denied it that's the wild right thing. after like, he denied it he, was like, and he just denied it deni- he just exactly. denied it right in what fall of 2023 so like and we just can't earlier fight... this year too yeah we look <clears throat> we can't fight for those things that are important to us when we are not fighting for each other and when we're dismissing, when people within our community are dismissing people's claims and and saying, and, and kind of minimizing what their experiences are. We need to actively listen and empathize and understand that whether someone speaks up about it immediately or 10, 12, 20 years later, that shit lives real in people's lives every day. So there's two things that you said, Landon, that I want to just touch on. One, <clears throat> the, the time, and that's one of the issues. So for those of you who do not know, the statute of limitations had surpassed, and that yeah. is why she could not take him to court for that. He Fast. settled out court, out um, out of court with her because of this video. Okay, 
That is why she ended up getting paid back in October and we never saw anything go to trial. And that is when people started being like, oh, well, clearly something did, nothing mm -hmm. happened if there was no trial. That's the reason why, because there are laws yeah. like, for instance, domestic Big violence, facts. where you can only you have up to two years or three years after the attack. And yeah. then it it goes past that. So that's one thing as far as the government wise, we need to do better at and we need to get those type of things changed because it might take time for you to process it, to realize yeah. and be able to advocate for yourself. Two and three years, you yeah. probably still working on things. Mm -hmm. That's part one. And not a lot of people are in the situation financially as a Cassie either. Where it's just like, okay, I had to get back to work and provide for my kids and my family mm -hmm. and stuff. So it's just like life be life and in the meantime as well. And the other thing that I want to point out too is that we have to remember that <clears throat> no one is above the law. Every like until proven innocent, you have to assume that both sides could be true. And you mm -hmm. don't pick sides until you have the evidence, until you have the proof, until everything has been settled and out in the open to make a decision. The idea of people taking one thing and running with it, and you're not doing your research and your history on what's happened before, is, is not all right. And the fact being that there have now been multiple people since this video, even before the video, okay? Before, so before yeah. the video, there have been old other people that come out. In December, he put a uh, he put a, a tweet out saying that he was tired of being silenced and his his character was being attacked and yada yada yada. And then here this video going and they doing exactly what proven that all these people who came out got something to to kind of show that there is some merit to what they're saying. And the cool thing, of, not the cool thing, one of the, the, the things now about this video and the trial with Cassie is that this video can now be used, not the video, but the instance with Cassie can now be used in other trials yeah. to show harm to his character, to show that this is yeah. actually part of who uh, he is. Patterns of behavior. Habitual. Yes, exactly. Yeah, patterns of behavior. So, I just encourage everyone to do your fucking research. Just don't be out here clickbaiting and, and, and watching videos and, and being in comments and stuff like that. Go and actually from a legal star, side, understand what's actually happening as well, too. Yeah. yeah, and you see like even his other ex, Misa, uh, Misa Hilton, who people kind of just know as like the famous stylist and things like that <clears throat> from back in the day with like Mary J. Blige, et cetera, et cetera, um, who also has a kid with Diddy. Um, some of her posts now have kind of come up and kind of given her strength to be able to kind of really start to speak more of her truth as well. Um, so yeah, I, ugh. and it's just like, I mean, it, it sucks to see power self-destruct people, you know, and, and, and we've seen it many times and it's not just within the black community, by the way, that's another thing I do want to say because yeah. <laughs> they quick to, to, to dismantle the black and brown community when you have like mm -hmm. a, a Shia LaBeouf out there at Cannes <laughs> movie festival and all this shit, and all this shit he been through and people want to act like he ain't did some shit. And, 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 and I also want to say people can, you know, get the help that they need to, to hopefully get their life back on the straight and narrow and things like that. So I don't want to, hold people down but clearly diddy is showing that he ain't learned nothing um mm -hmm. and i don't know about shia if he has or not but it's just like i hate the narrative that like it's just a black and brown community but that's maybe a whole nother topic for a whole nother day but um but I, it, it just sucks to see people abuse power and then the folks around them see this power and kind of want to have some of that power too and not have the courage to maybe speak up sooner than later. And then now after the stuff come out, be like, oh yeah, I did see that Negro do this shit. And bitch, like you should have said that shit a decade ago. Like you was right mm -hmm. there and You're you kind of got engulfed in that same power kind of dynamic and you had bills to pay. And I get it, I get it in a weird way, but I don't get it in another way. But it's just like, that's another part that's just like, there's just so much in this narrative, in the in this story, that's bigger than even just like Diddy, Cassie, and Misa, and all the relationships, there's the other circle around folks around it that kind of <clears throat> let that shit go on all this time as well. Yeah. And and I get that Diddy was a powerful human being, so if you, even if you did try to speak up, and maybe you did, he's been known to destroy a lot of lives, even famous people's lives. So I get it, and it's hard, but it's just like, it, it, sometimes it's a little too late to be saying, oh, yeah, I said, I uh, told you so. Like, no, like, sometimes you got to fight a little harder. And I, I don't know what that looks like all the time. But but I don't know. If, you, if just... you see if you see someone in your circle acting a fool, call them bitches out. Call be like, no, out. we ain't doing that here. Or I can't associate myself with you, you know, kind of thing. But This is unfortunately the 
I hate to say it, but this is this is only the beginning of this can of worms. Obviously, talking about it on the Mike. podcast, it's this is just a, a this is just the beginning of a can of worms. Unfortunately, where obviously we've talked about this on the podcast before, but I just I I, I personally know and have also been a victim of domestic violence. And whether it's one moment and it never happens again, or whether it's happened before, or it's happened, success, there's a succession and it's happened multiple times. This is unfortunately, I feel, I don't have a magic eight ball, but I, this is just the beginning, unfortunately, of where, of, of what we're seeing. And at some point, the truth is going to get out there. It's going to get out there, whether it be through criminal courts or through civil courts, or even if it's not through courts and it's in the court of public opinion, which, you know, has its, its, has its minuses, kind of like what <coughs> Auntie Jarrell said about, you know, doing your research and not, you know, giving into the clickbait, utilizing objective information to, I guess, forming your own opinion. I'm telling you right now, this is just the beginning, unfortunately, yeah. that we're, we're seeing this individual, we're seeing Cassie's story ring true. It just, it, it hits a special piece and, you know, God, God, God rest the soul that I'm about to talk about, but being a, a victim of domestic violence when I was 18, 19, I, I, it took me a very long time to process that when things got really bad with my dad and the level of forgiveness that it took well past after my dad passed took years of feeling guilty that I didn't express that forgiveness before he passed. And while that was one instance, having my dad arrested, I've never told anybody this, having my dad arrested in front of my nephews is something that I had forgotten about until my sister brought it up a, a couple, like a year ago. I was like, yo, I forgot all about that because I never wanted the reputation and how great my dad was. All right. We all make mistakes. I never wanted people to see him in that light. And I kind of buried that. And so when it comes down to people who are not able to tell their story, sometimes it's just repressed. It's just, packed down at the bottom and you don't I, I forgot about it i forgot that he hit me in front of the police station in front of the police station and now i gotta have your ass arrested in front of your grandkids and so i'm not equating what happened to me to cassie because that was worse by far but i get it when it comes down to not talking about it speaking up years later and not being able to fully form the narrative in order to communicate it in a way that like can be felt and heard and people can empathize with you. I, I get it. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a, it's a real thing. So I appreciate that you um, put that, um, that hotline out there for people to be able to use um, in case they need someone to talk to. Yeah. And again, that number is one 800 799 Seven two three three is the domestic abuse hotline. One eight hundred seven nine nine seven two three three. Um, and on that note, I think we'll take a quick little tea break. Mm -hmm. Hey, community! A lot of you have asked how you can support Minority Report outside of the sharing and downloading and subscribing and leaving reviews, but you can also buy merch. Come on, baby! I know that's right. And we have a whole lot of options from clothing to pillows to tumblers and bags. And we continue to update all of our stuff with new styles, new colors, and new products. Jarrell, where can they get all that stuff at? Well, they can get all that and then some at MinorityReport.com. They can find all the goodies, find out additional information about your aunties. And we also want to make sure that you share and tag us when you do buy merch, all right? So let us know if it's a hoodie, it's a tee, a long shirt, a towel, because we know you need those. But let us know. <laughs> Absolutely. And remember to wash your hands, your legs, and your ass. All righty, ladies. What time is it? Ask. Ask. 
your auntie. Uh, who? Hey, Landon, you can read it. We'll let you read it. I don't even know where it is. Where is it? Oh, is that in there? Say, she don't know how to read. That's in oh, there. Oh, I know how to read. <laughs> She I know how to read. She said, I, I also know. Miss I, I, I also know how to go to the right airport. Um, well, that's because yeah. your ass live out there. You should. So, man, <laughs> man. Just click on the chat there on the right, and then uh, click on everyone, and it should be in there. I can't remember if I put it in there before you hopped back on or not. Yeah, you did. If not, that was oh, the last one. Okay, I got it. I got okay. it. Thank you. There you go. All right. <clears throat> hey, aunties, how would you feel if a guy you're dating wrote you a poem? I want to write a poem for someone I've been going out on dates with for the past three months. Months, I've known him for over a year, but we started going out on dates again. He really enjoys poetry. It's not something. It's it's not going to be something over the top about my feelings for him or anything like that. I feel like that would be too much. It'd just be about him and what I like about him. Is it too soon? Too cringy? Too corny? Mm -hmm. I think it's really cute. I, I really honestly <laughs> think it's really cute. Um, some There's people, a line though on the cuteness though, and I'll get to that. <laughs> some people don't aren't aren't good with poetry. Like poetry is an art, and and so if you actually have the capability of writing like poetry, like I've seen some really good spoken word and be moved to tears and shit like that. If you if you're good at that, bitch, yeah. do it because that's something that could be easily like one of those memories that that person will, will forever remember in their life, right? Now, the only thing I would say is as long as you keep with, you know, the time frame, right? Because it's only been a couple months. So just, you know, I think it's cute if it's just about what you like about them and who they are as a person. You start spilling your feelings in there, it might get a little cringe because writing a poem for someone is showing your feelings enough so you don't have mm -hmm. to add your feelings in it because that's something so thoughtful that most yeah. people wouldn't decide to do that alone shows how you feel so yeah. keep to the whole doing a poem about them and what you like about them you don't got to add your feelings because the act itself is kind of a love language if you're being honest it's an act yeah. of service yeah, so. no, I agree. And that's what I was going to say. There, there's a line <laughs> before it goes into cringy and slightly corny, especially if you're not good at it. You're like, damn, he tried, but this shit kind of corny and it's all <laughs> long and shit. And even the stanzas ain't even going to shit. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but for me, like stuff like that, like is super thoughtful. You would you would get the panties. You would get the panties off. I'd be like, OK, that, that's sweet. He listened that heard me say that I like poems. So you wanted to take your hand and actually kind of do something like that. Yeah, yeah, I kind of like that in a weird way. Um, it could be corny, honestly, too. It could probably be slightly corny, but like, damn, okay, you know, he tried, though. He tried. But I agree with Jarrell. If, if it's starting to say, and I loved you for, for, since the first day you walked in, and uh, then it'd be like, oh, God, girl, like, it's only been three months. Hold on, that's a lot to take in right now. Like, this yeah. is a little cringe now. I feel a little uncomfortable. <laughs> um that would be a super line for me to be like, okay, no, it's just a little too soon for all that. But uh, but yeah, no, if, if you're good at it, or even if you're not good at it, maybe it's a short little funny poem or something like that. Be like, hey, I wrote this for you because I know you like poems. It made me think of you. And keep it that simple. Doesn't have to be too, too over the over the top. Uh, yeah, so, and, and if that's how you express yourself, I don't want to tell you not to express yourself because that part. <sighs> there's so many people that can't emotionally express themselves and that's what we all want. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's be so, honest like some people do the bare minimum out here so, like, i mean i can tell you right now i think i never got a poem for somebody me <laughs> so when i tell you like this is something that can be something that's special and unique that's something that yeah. a lot of people unique. don't do right <laughs> i say go for it honestly yeah. i do and and be true to yourself at the end of the day landa if a nigga wrote you a poem today what would you do she probably received poems and write poems look at her Ooh, okay. You ever wrote somebody a poem? Look, Landon? she's silent. She's thinking about it. It happened. <laughs> uh, look, listen. You write me a poem. I'm sucking that dick. Like that's, yeah, that's right. right. <laughs> Get down. Um, you, these you know, <laughs> these draws coming off tonight. <laughs> right now. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, there's there. Everybody has a way of how they want to 
communicate and how they want to be communicated to. And poetry is whether it's written and you send it in a written form or whether you verbally say it, how you say it, um, I think speaks volumes about whoever, whomever, you know, wrote this speaks volumes as to that empathy of understanding how someone wants to be communicated to. Yeah. If someone's like, Hey, I love poetry, whether, you know, it's something I hear or something that I read, um, regularly for that empathy and to understand how someone wants to be communicated to, I think is a step in the right direction about establishing communication and just kind of like what auntie Jarrell said about you know there are some people out there that cannot communicate their feelings at all that don't know how to communicate at all the fact that that this person our writer wants to be able to communicate in a way that this person likes it really speaks volumes about empathy and connection and connection is a choice. If you choose empathy as a choice. So if you say, you know, I know that this dude really likes poetry and um, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do something. I agree with auntie Carell about, you know, there is that line about making sure that it's not too cringy and not too corny, but also you feel what you feel. And if you make it yeah. about them and, and the things that you love about them, um, you know, making sure that it's not, you know, roses are red, violets are blue. All I want to know is what that mouth would do. Uh, like, honey. I mean, I mean and that's not a bad poem. Because, you know, mine's, mine's would be something like roses are red, grass is greener, show me that wiener. You know, like some shit like that, bitch. <laughs> Leboudicus 423. <laughs> Look, okay. Shoot. Sure. I know that's right. So, you know, and look, as, and, and that's the kind of the, the funny corny that would actually be. Super right. fire in my book. Yes. Super yeah. fire. Yeah. I'm just like, making okay, you know sure, what? like, You're just making sure it's tonight. not, you know, <laughs> I, I agree with, you know, Auntie Carell about just making sure that, like, make it about them and you're only three months in. You don't want to be dropping the L bomb and, you know, talking about, you know, jumping the broom and getting it in a room. Like, I just feel like make it about that person and some of the observations, some of the things that you see in them that you really like and that are unique about them. And you can't go wrong. And at the end of the day, when we are living in a world where social media and text are so predominant, for you to be able to just communicate in such a unique way, I think will speak volume. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. honestly, it might be, and I don't know if this is your, your love language even like maybe that's just how it's easier for you to communicate that way rather than verbally or something like that and for you to find a unique way to kind of express how you're feeling in the moment yes we know it's early on and things like that but i'm feeling you and i'm willing to take the time to kind of express it i think it's going to go a long way for sure for yeah. sure so let us know how it goes let us know how it goes right and let yeah. us know if you want to share the poem at all <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> like no, I ain't gonna show all my work up there. Y'all gonna make fun of me. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no, that was like a, a unique. I like that. Unique. Uh, Ashley aunties, I thought. Um, so continue to send Ashley aunties to aya at minorityreport dot com or DM us or send it to the T line. Uh, it's eight four four, and I have my notes this week. Eight four four eight three two five four six three, and that way you can kind of hear the voicemail that's out there. You can leave the message, and we can play it live on the episode. And we have yet to take anyone or have anyone take us up on that offer. So again, I'm gonna say the number: eight four four eight three two five four six three, and be the first one. You know, let's break let's break the ice and uh and get you on the air and obviously you could keep your name anonymous and things like that and if you want us to speed up the voice or something like that to, to make sure that people don't, can't tell it's you we could do all kinds of things so um so yeah it'd be kind of fun to have you have you do that um so at the end of this week we're getting into pride month already ladies happy pride happy pride happy, happy pride. pride which is mm. crazy i'm like how mm. are we i know Jarrell every year is the, the screw mm. to pride but that's okay mm -hmm. <laughs> oh i missed this memo <laughs> Oh, no, yeah, she's you not have the biggest it. pride human being. I show am not. <laughs> Y'all can go back and listen to the episodes of why right. I am not the biggest pride person. I, I, you know what? As a matter of fact, that's exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> Every that's year, exactly that's the pride. She's like, do. oh, she's like, y'all have fun. <laughs> I'm like, I, I sure will. <laughs> Look, for the both of us. Honey, and I appreciate period. it. Period. But one big thing this year, though, that they're already calling out, which kind of stinks, is uh, the FBI and the Homeland Security is already calling and warning of possible threats to the LGBTQIA plus events. 
um, yeah. throughout Pride Month, throughout the U.S., and the world and a lot of folks are like what about the domestic terrorists i'm like yeah they here too so it ain't just like foreign terrorists it's, it's all kinds of t terror so as we always preach about like how you know pride month is just more than just like the the, the fun of it it could be and be, we need to make sure that we're registered to vote like let's make sure that we have folks registered to vote because right when pride season is done we're gonna start getting in that home stretch of like oh the presidential and things uh election and things but also just make sure you use your wits about you. Make sure you're looking out for the community, especially this year with these warnings and things like that. You see something, say something, knock the motherfucker out. <laughs> um, but um, I'll just say the look buddy out system. for one another. The first, the light, we need Literally. some constructive buddy system. When you're out doing pride, don't be going nowhere by yourself, okay? You should have someone walking with you. Don't be in dark spaces, like outside in the clubs. It's a whole different conversation. Yeah, I was about to but say, when you, we're not, I'm talking about like those. <laughs> I'm talking about those dark alleys and places and the cities where you're trying to do a shortcut, mm -hmm. right? Like, yeah, yeah. just make sure that you are staying in places Tell where you where can you're going. be seen. Yeah. Share your locations with your friends. Mm -hmm. Like, just please be safe. It sounds stupid. But the truth is, there are stupid people out there. So That's... we got, we have to do these things. That's... This is just part yeah. of it. So live to see another day, y'all, and and yeah. and make sure that you are able to to have fun. But there's no being safe mm. doesn't make it less fun. Like right. being safe should right. be part of your fun. If yeah. you being safe and reckless, then you probably need therapy. Let's be honest. So. Yeah. And even if it's reckless, because we've all had some reckless moments, again, just just don't make it right. Be, be, be as safe as possible. Just you know, because it's just like I get it. Like especially if like potentially drinks are flowing, drugs are flowing, whatever you and I'm not yucking. You know, nobody's yum. Do you? Yep. But especially this year, if they're already kind of telling us to do our due diligence and be aware of our surroundings, please do that because you know folks are already crazy. I already saw an article today that folks were um, with pellet guns shooting up a club out in L.A a queer club so it's just like folks are we here just heard about it, in new york crazy. what happened with the the security guards and getting <sighs> jumped and stomped and, and kicked at a gay bar. outside and, and that's at a gay bar so like they were you're seeing to be the hate crime. Right. right you're seeing the rise happen and it's not shocking given that this is a presidential election year yeah. so a lot of the conversations that are happening around the world it's crazy i've actually had so many conversations with people who don't live in the U.S. who are just as concerned about the presidential elections because yeah. how the presidential elections affect the whole the entire, entire fucking world. world. The whole the entire world, y'all. Like, yeah. So, like, we, we got to be... Some of us are thinking about our own backyard, but we got to think big picture as well, too. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Yeah. Oh. You look at, like, here in New York with some of the events that happened last year and the year before where... Um, gay men were being robbed and of yeah. their, you know, of, of their wallets and their phones and money being taken and unfortunately losing their lives. And let's also put it out, put it out there that we don't know what they were doing. They could have been leaving the club with a friend and this still could have happened. So it doesn't hurt to be, you know, the buddy system, like Auntie Jarrell said, also letting people know where you're going to be. We have all, at some point in our lives, gone to somebody else's place, all right? Doesn't map hurt to say, day. hey, <laughs> it doesn't, it, it, right? The map quest days, we got to print that shit. Like, it doesn't hurt to say, hey, this is where I'm going to be. This is where I'm going. I'll text you when I get home. And when we look at some of the things that have been happening within our community, this goes the, the spectrum of of what's been happening is there's there's been anti lgbtqi plus bills being filed in state legislatures more than like 500 mm -hmm. 200 of those are focused on trans and non-binary people humans when we look at that to the violence that is occurring in our community, we cannot allow the progress that we've made over the past two decades to allow us to become complacent. Because let's also put it out there that about 20 years ago is when the Massachusetts Supreme Court said, hey, you cannot keep 
you know, LGBTQI people from getting married. And that was a state decision could not be appealed. So we're looking at that instance from that, that spark. And even before all the things that happened in, you know, the seventies and eighties, we cannot allow all the progress that we've made with equality to get us to be complacent. We still have to continue to fight. We still have to continue to vote and we still have to continue to spread the word in others, not being complacent, getting them registered to vote. Also letting them know what resources are available to them, because there are those out there, whether it be, it, it, it could even be here in New York. There are people here in New York that do not want to see me as a black person and as a gay person be alive. All right. Whether it be in a gay friendly state, if that's what we want to call it, or a state that's out in the Midwest, like Idaho, some Oklahoma shit, even even shit that's happening outside of the United States and North America in Africa. We cannot allow complacency to rule the day. And it's super important that we get out there and vote, that we be aware of those issues and not think that it's going to be somebody else's problem, because at some point you don't want hate to affect you or hate to affect someone that you love and that's the, as... and that's one of the reasons why again pride for me i'm a scrooge because pride for came from a form of protest mm -hmm. and somehow we've gotten away from the protest to just wanting to exist which i get but mm -hmm. to your point with everything that's happened in the world we can't forget we have to continue to fight and live at the same time. There has to be a little bit of both. Yeah. And I would just like to see people doing like some of those things like you said, Landon, being able to live, be your most authentic self, but also don't forget that we still have to do the work and not say someone else can, can do this work for us. And the other thing that I want to say too, and you touched a little bit on this, Landon, and, and I feel like we should probably go on because we've been doing this forever, but... <clears throat> We know that this is not just a Pride Month thing. We have seen so many of our brothers and sisters who are trans individuals have been consistently being killed and murdered across this whole fucking world. The reason why in Pride they're saying something now is because they're knowing that there's going to be a collection of the queer community. But the truth is, this shit happens in May, April, June, every fucking month all the time and so yeah. just know that this isn't just a right now you make it to june and poof this will never happen again it's been happening it's going to continue to happen until we do what something about it yeah but on a, also on the flip side though too like there is something a joy about gathering with folks that you want to gather with during this month to enjoy yourself. There's nothing wrong about enjoying yourself. You can do both at the same time, because guess what? Stonewall was the bar, and that's where the protest started. They was having them a kiki, and they was breaking up that damn kiki. So it's just like, okay, we can protest tomorrow, because we were trying to get that drink on last night, you know? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and it's okay, like, because like I think sometimes folks say, oh, you out here at the Pride parties, and you went to this circuit party? No, ho, I'm also voting. I'm also making sure people are registered. Like, it's cool to have both yeah. of those and knowing what that balance is, um, even if you don't see it on social media all the time. You know, Pride like, is a, a lot, lot of times different like, things. Because I've been like, that ain't what people want to see. You know, you want to see the men's is with their shirts off and stuff like that. But it also doesn't mean that you're not doing stuff in behind the scenes as well. And that you should feel bad one way or the other if you're more if you're more of the activist and, and things like that, or if you're more the party and things like that. It all will hopefully balance out, but just be sure to keep your wits about you, protect each other because they ain't protecting us. <laughs> so, so at the, 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 the yeah, yeah, I see your face. It is what it is. But um, we that we can so, we can easily happily agree to disagree. Yeah, That's yeah, all yeah. it is. We, we have for the and last I, five years. <laughs> yeah, because I because I've, I've, I've been like this for that. June. I've been like this for June, <laughs> seven years now. Because I've also been a person who's been roofied and had the queer community during Pride Month attack me. So I stand ten toes down on how I feel because you know of my experience, Jarrell. and that's okay. <laughs> Uh, Jarrell, I'm right. Yeah. I, I was right That's there was okay. with you. All of it's okay. All of no, I'm not talking to you. Them. I'm talking yeah, yeah, to the yeah. people out I'm there not, who yeah, listen. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> We're just yeah. making sure everyone I'm talking to knows them. if this is their first yeah. episode. This, yeah. and, and that's why and, I shared my story yeah. with them. <laughs> And Jarrell, like, like for, for a little bit, when I lived in Boston, I felt that way because 
I felt that Boston, Boston Pride was really just for the straight white muscle gays. And what really it, it didn't straight, seem white muscle I, gays. That's what I was like, I was like, well, no, the straight, straight muscle gays. Mask, mask, you know, <laughs> oh, whatever. Okay, okay. You know, got it, got the way I, said, <laughs> I was like, hold on, damn. Are these DL <laughs> you know? men you talking about? I got some yeah. questions. <laughs> yeah, I forgot my little quotes. <laughs> It, it it never felt very inclusive and yeah. it's and today to this point it's it still doesn't because they still can't get this shit together um and neither can houston that's a whole different story but i i'm right there with you when it comes down to what pride really is and pride can be and must be more than just a month pride and protest must be more than a moment and it can also, just like Corral said, it can also be the things behind the scenes of voting, making sure that you are aware that what you're voting for and who you're voting for, that mm -hmm. there's someone that could be saying, hey, I'm doing this in your face and doing something completely different behind the scenes in their voting record. And so uh, I'm, I'm with both of you in regards to like, Jarrell, I'm right there with you about like what pride is because for a little bit pride wasn't shit. I'm like, yo, fuck that shit. Like, I don't care. But then once I started to understand, like once I, once I found out that my niece was gay, I, my, my, my mentality changed a little bit and that I can be also proud and celebrate pride for others. And so, Corral, like, I'm just with you as well of, like, hey, it can also be the things that we do behind the scenes in voting and mm -hmm. attending, like, you all did the GLAD event. Like, that's pride right there of mm -hmm. wanting to get um, wanting to get exposure and, and outreach to those that might still, that, that need that, that don't have the opportunity to celebrate pride. There's someone out there listening to this podcast that they this can't go pride. celebrate pride. Mm -hmm. They yeah. can't celebrate pride. Yeah. They can't Absolutely. listen. They can't <clears throat> celebrate. They can't be in a parade. They can't do the things that we do. And this is their pride. Mm -hmm. And so we have to go out there and continue to do things more than just what the events are, the circuit parties. But I will tell you, I'm gonna, year, <laughs> I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna be there. Okay, I'm gonna be there. Proud as shit. Gay as fuck. Okay. Let, let me ride all and let me tell above. you something. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. I have been looking for days. It, it's not up there. I'm looking for a bleach blonde, bad built, butch body crop top. Mm -hmm. Period. Same. Same. Period. And to be fair, like, <laughs> and for those of you who have not listened. Like, although, like, I'm an activist throughout, I'm a strong activist yeah. throughout Pride because mm -hmm. for yes. me, I like to just be the one person just to also remind people of the other side of the coin. Like mm -hmm. you all are saying, there's two sides to the coin. And I also respect everyone wanting to choose joy. Absolutely. But there also has to be that one person who is still on lookout. <laughs> because if nobody's paying attention, no, no, because <laughs> no, we're, we are considered the screws because if, if, if no one's paying attention, that's yeah. how shit really gets happened, right? Like that's yep. when shit really gets south. And so some of us are the ones that choose to be the more vigilant ones and to be, make sure that we're reminding people, hey, you got to look, you got to watch because it's all fun and games until you lose your life or to someone you know lose your life. And then it's no longer that. And we know that there are people out there who are just fucking shitty people who mm -hmm. would just try to just because they are not happy with them own selves. And yeah. you will see me, and I will say this, I drink my form of activism. I'm, June is a sober month for me. I am sober all of June until the last weekend of June, which is Pride here, and then I choose to celebrate. Other than that, I'm not drinking. You're not seeing me out here doing Pride stuff. I'm out here, if I am doing Pride stuff, I'm advocating for HIV and AIDS. I'm advocating for politics. I'm advocating for local legislation. I'm out here doing all the other stuff. So that's how I you'll do it. You'll see me doing and both. Okay. I'm gonna be out here in these and streets okay. and in these voting booths. Out in these streets, honey. <laughs> I'll be outside, wait. inside, I mean, ain't no vote, outside, ain't no voting booths doing June. I'm speaking specifically doing there's, Pride there's Month. There's preliminaries. 
the, the, I'm talking about what I'm doing doing June month. That's what I said, me too. Actually out there. That's what I'm doing. Outside, outside, upside, downside, outside, well. downtown, uptown. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Honey, if I'm not twerking on a wall, it's not proper. Period. Period. And I'll be joyful about it too. Telling are you, you go coming? vote at wait, the same wait, 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 time. Wait, wait, wait. That's why. <laughs> so it must be it must be Pride 365 for me, bitch, because I stay twerking on the wall. I don't need to twerk on the wall. Same. Same. So that's all I'm saying. 366 this year. Pride ain't bringing me nothing. I don't do. Pride ain't bringing me nothing. I don't do shit on a motherfucking regular ass Tuesday. 366 this year. So that's year, all I'm saying. Be. And it's doing nothing I don't always do <laughs> on a regular ass day. <laughs> Listen, uh, being the elder to... statesman, being the elder statesman of this group, these <laughs> right. only got it for one month, okay? The, uh, the hottie. Because here's the thing, like, here's the thing, too, like, that, like, I think sometimes we forget that, like, because for me, I came out later in life. Mm-hmm. And so some people are like, oh, I came out with my teenager. For me, I don't want to feel like I have to be held hostage of being afraid anymore. Mm. I was afraid for way too long. And so, like, they kind of see this stuff. It doesn't mean I'm not going to be diligent. There's not going to be that the activist side of me isn't going to be out there and all that stuff. But it's like, I I, I just don't want it for me, <laughs> Carell, Auntie Carell, don't want the message oh, that I me. send. And it could be everyone else's that, that for me, because I was scared for so long that, like, yeah. when there is a month that's specifically carved out. I also want to make sure that I feel that joy in whatever it is. It could be activism, it could be at the club, it could be wherever it may be. Because I know there's so many people like myself that didn't come out until later and then just now be like, damn, I can't even enjoy Pride enough because like there's the FBI warnings and things like, like that. And feel the joy, whether that, if you're too scared to go to the club, bring your friends to your crib where you can kind of control what you can control mm-hmm. or whatever, whatever you want your pride to look like. Mm-hmm. If you're too scared to go to the voting booths or the libraries to kind of hold your situation, bring them to your crib, wherever it is. But I just don't want people to be scared of joy because that's what they want us to feel is the fear and mm-hmm. fear is crippling. And so that's what, like, when I see this stuff, sometimes it, it, it kind of brings me back to, I'm like, damn. I don't want folks that are struggling to come out right now or whatever it may be to have that fear cripple them again, mm-hmm. right when they might have been on the cusp of being able to come out, right when they were on the cusp of maybe potentially going to their first Pride event, maybe for the first time going to a gay bar. I remember the first time trying to go to a gay bar during Pride, and the fear was so fucking crippling. Like, it will stay with me for the rest of my life. Like, it, it, like, it brings me to tears every time I think of that Corel. Because I was like, mm. I am so fucking scared. So just to see some of this stuff, it's just like, find joy with whatever pride looks like for you. Whatever it looks like. And that's the message I think we're all trying to say at the same time. is like, find whatever that joy is in that moment. Even if it's for one day, half a day, an hour, listen to the podcast, whatever it may be. Don't let them take your joy. And because to Carol's that's point, the what joy could be activism want. too. That's I think what they that's want. the thing. Right, right, that right. like like joy doesn't have to be the turn one up. Thing. Joy doesn't have to be the drinking and going thing. out. Pri- joy for pride for you could be just going and knocking on your neighbors, being like, "Hey, Period. do you know who who you know who your city councilman is? Do you know who your senators are? Right? Do you know who you're voting for? Do you know like that mm-hmm. could also be a sense of joy or helping as well, the homeless too. down the street. Right? Like it, like there's so many like, variations, and it could be one thousand percent. You know. So yeah. that's, yeah. but at the end of the day, choose joy, find joy, try to get away from the fear part and try not to let people bring or instill fear into you because that's what you've tried to get away from all your life if you haven't come out or if you came out and you're, you're finally out here and now they're trying to put you back in the box. So anyway, okay, we've been harping on this for a minute. Um, anything else? Go ahead, Landon. Are you coming? Are you coming to New York for Pride? I will, we'll talk about this offline. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I, I don't need the community to know all my business. <laughs> okay. Okay, girl. All the business. Because if you see me outside, I might not be in activist mode at that moment. <laughs> Noted. Noted. Anything else on your hearts and minds? <laughs> uh-uh. No? No. Oh, all right. Well, happy birthday again, Landon. Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, Thank you. Community, birthday. be safe out there. Again, be diligent. Be safe. And wash your hands, your legs, and your ass. All of it. We will see you next week. All of it. Bye. Bye. Peace.